A lot of Nintendo fans in particular have been looking forward to what could be a Nintendo Switch 2. And a lot of gamers want one. But the question really is, does Nintendo really need one? That is today's question of the day as we're going to take a look at this very long article by IGN. And they will talk about does Nintendo really need a Nintendo Switch 2? And I'm going to be putting my two cents into it because there's something we need to cover on that. Let's read today's article. And it is a big one. The, the, the headline is, Developers and Analysis Sound Off. Does the next-gen Nintendo Switch need to happen in 2024? And the sub-headline read, reads the following. Rumors are swirling over a possible Switch successor in 2024. Does Nintendo... But does Nintendo even need one? Question mark. This was written by Rebecca Valentine on July 28, 2023. Let's read because this is long. <clears throat> Let's get started. It switched to rumor season again. Numerous reports of varying credibility have begun to crop up in recent months about a potential new console for Nintendo. We've heard everything from whispers of circulating dev kits to manufacturers preparing for increased sales to, ana to analysis and competitors bracing for the financial impact. The discussions have stirred up concerns about backward compatibility following the massive success of the original Switch. Given Nintendo's rocky history with preservation of its own games, I'm looking at you Nintendo, and, a fa and fan committees and podcasts like ours on IGN are speculating wildly about what Nintendo's next hardware might look like. Whether if it's more of a Switch 2 or something new entirely, we know for a fact it's not happening at, until at least April 2024, but beyond that, the door is wide open. Let the speculation flow. For now, no one knows the truth of any of this except Nintendo itself but there is one question you, we can try to answer with our own partly knowledge does Nintendo even need a Switch successor next year let's read on software wise fans have been divided on the subject some point to the games like Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as prime examples of the Switch struggling and needing an upgrade. And Ubisoft itself said it wishes it had waited to release Mario plus Rabbids Spark of Hope. But others use games like Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Monster Hunter Rise, or even Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom as examples of the console being just fine. Thank you very much. With style and design winning out over technology powerless. Meanwhile, Switch continues to sell, with Tears of the Kingdom's launch in May pushing it back to the best-selling hardware platform in both dollar and unit sales for the month. We could speculate here all day, but I wanted to know what the experts thought. So I spoke to eight Switch game developers and three analysis about whether or not Nintendo really needs to drop any console, Switch 2 or otherwise, next year and their answers are were as about divided as you might expect let's get started with this one the little console that could another of a number of independent developers i spoke to felt that nintendo could easily wait until 2025 before introducing a new system or perhaps even longer while some of the reasons differed, many suggested that the Switch's large install base made it ideal for smaller studios with limited resources for console development, with few hardware-related drawbacks for making games that aren't necessarily pushing technological boundaries. One anonymous developer who recently release a game on the Switch suggested that it even may be content to wait until PlayStation and Microsoft release new consoles to see a new Nintendo console. Given that the technological gra gap isn't getting any bigger until then. 
Brooks Bishop of Creaky Lantern Games acknowledged that developers who want to push for more advanced graphics likely needed a new machine, but argued that the prospect of a new console generally, generally is always nerve. Nerve wracking to smaller developers who have worked to build audiences on current gen platforms. Quote, Given Nintendo's guarded and opaque approach to developer relations, should there be a new console, there is also no guarantee we'll even be permitted to develop for it. The best case scenario for us is a system with, with increased hardware specs that is hot backwards compatible with existing Nintendo Switch software and is tied to the Nintendo current eShop. This way, no matter what, we can keep working and release our existing projects and they will be available, available to users of the entire si of either system. While I think this would be a benefit to consumers, it's also not guaranteed to happen, and I agree. I'll explain why in a moment. I'll explain why now, right now before we continue. So, I really think he's right. Brooks Bishop is correct. Because there needs to be backwards compatible with the existing Switch system. With the with the upcoming rumored system in order for this to work. And but he's also correct on it's not guaranteed to happen. He has a point there because nothing is guaranteed in life. That's the thing. Okay. Let's continue. In fact, there was a notable, noticeable divide in the opinions of developers I chatted with. Those who felt Nintendo could wait longer were largely working on very small projects, generally in 2D or without espe especially complex technological needs. Developers of larger, better established or more visually, visually and technology, technically complex projects were more eager for more eager for a Switch successor in the future. Jonathan B. Gorgson of Triple Topping Games praised the Switch's utility for both players and developers, but admitted it was starting to lag behind, even for indie studios. Quote, Technology has uh, advanced a lot since the Switch was released, he said. And he continues, Indie developers now spend less time optimizing their games and more time developing features and making their games fun. Releasing on the Nintendo Switch could add a lot of development time for optimization. That might, be not, that might not be economically viable for smaller studios. Compared to the Steam Deck, where a game is likely just to run without needing any optimization, end quote. M Morbin Fikri, founder of Vertex Pop, Agreed. He pointed out that the Switch is, quote, more powerful than folks give it credit for and, quote, can pull off impressive results in the right hands. Fikri points to Metroid Prime Remastered as an example. But he also observed that in the time since the Switch has been released, technological, technical requirements have evolved. What's more, Developers are increasingly finding themselves in the awkward position of developing for three generations of consoles at once. The Switch, the PS4, the Xbox One, the PS5, and Xbox Series consoles. So, with that, we have a quote from another studio, Triple Topping Games, about indie developers with making their games more fun while trying to make it on the on the switch. We also have another developer from Vertex Pop talking about correct if it's in the right hands then it was gonna be working. There's a poll here and included with this article. I did not vote, but what what do you want most? 
from Nintendo Switch's successor, and the choices were keep the hybrid design, give me 4K, better be better be backwards compatible, virtual reality, something else. Let us know in the comments. 45.7% 45, 45 said backwards compatible, and I, I actually agree with that. Because if the Switch 2 is going to be as successful as the Switch 1, it has to it has to be backwards compatible because there are certain games that are not going to be there on the Switch 2 and I mean excuse me at the Switch 2 and games that are only on the Switch 1 if it's compatible if it's backwards compatible then everybody's happy as we see with other companies like Sony and Microsoft trying to attempt to do this backwards compatible but knowing how Nintendo is, they're not very consumer friendly when it comes to preserving video games. And we have seen that in the past. The article continues. For many developers, uh, there is a quote, quote, for many developers, these are just interactable, interactable problems are going to involve making hard decisions and trade-offs or result in sub-optimal optimal switch ports, Vickery continued. From Nintendo's side, I, do not, I don't expect a switch successor to mean any support for the switch. I think the switch will continue to live on door shelves as Nintendo's budget platform and smaller, hopefully wider, hopefully weirder games will continue to ship on the platform. For at least another five years. End quote. One anonymous developer is currently working on a game for the Switch, was even more firm about its limitations, calling out elements, poor performance, the limitation of Joy Con controllers, and especially load times as being significant drawbacks for developing for the console from the beginning. And this anom anonymous developer quote says, quote, as a developer, I can't help but be shocked at the state of things with the development of games on the Nintendo Switch. Already at the time of the PS4, PS, Xbox One, developing on the Switch was an optimization challenge. Competitors simply offer more powerful co consoles. However, the technology and performance gap between the t consoles then and now is difficult to overcome. The quote continues. We therefore have a choice. Make a beautiful and dynamic game that runs very well on PS5 or other modern platforms, or stick to making a game that is less attractive and really slower on the competition. Then the competition. So should Nintendo release a new console? The answer is yes. Because developers we will be tired of developing or un or on an underperforming console while the competition offers cutting edge features, end quote. So he's right. This anonymous developer is correct. Nintendo Switch has been able to, to play games. You've been able to play games like Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and that's a big game. But if you look at the way that this quote is read, the way that he reads it is that he wants a new console because knowing that he has four, the PlayStations of the days and the Xbox of the world are releasing cutting edge technology, Nintendo is far behind when it comes to this. That's what he's saying here. Let's continue because this article is gonna, gonna get into big stuff here. Let's continue here. Up and to the right. Like the developers I spoke to, anal Analysis Summary had a mix of thoughts of whether or not Switch successor was a ne necessity for Nintendo. Though they put the question into financial terms rather than technical ones. So, um, Sir Kana, I, I hope I'm saying this right. Sir Kana, Executive Director Analysis and Analysis, Matt Brick. Catala pointed to uh, the Circana's forecast, 
which has a many pla Nintendo pla hardware platform releasing in 2024. But, that w uh, but what would that actually happen? Particular isn't entirely sure for the given reason that Nintendo loves to be unpredictable. And he or she says, quote, Given the current sales trajectory of the Switch hardware, what's outside of the launch of Tears of the Kingdom has been trending downwards since peaking in 2020. I think, I think the 2024 timing is optimal to ensure a successful transition. Generational transition, he said. Could they extend it another year and release a new platform in 2025? Sure, but it would really put them through a tough year position through holiday 2024 and early 2025, especially with the improved momentum of PS5 and the impact of potential additions to the Game Pass offering on Xbox Sales Series devices. He says he considers Nintendo and, it, and its consoles to be quote, quote co-operative rather than directly competitive to the, the PS, PlayStation and Xbox. Thanks to high numbers of PS5 and Xbox console owners who also own Switches. For that reason, console market share isn't as big of a deal to Nintendo, but nevertheless, the declining sales of the Switch indicate that, indicate to Piscatella Pist 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 that 2024 is the right year for an upgrade, unless a major first party title can slow or reverse the downward trends, allowing Nintendo to rate it out until 2025. Okay, let's break this down. This analysis said, this analysis mentioned that the sales have been dropping even after Tears of the Kingdom was released. So it peaked at that point, and this analysis also says 2024 is the perfect time because rumors have it already saying rumors are already saying that the next PlayStation consoles for the next generation and the Xbox consoles are already having rumors of 2025, 2026, 2027, or 2028. That's those are the rumors right now. And the optimal timing is 2024, according to this analysis. I'm going to explain why I agree later on when we end the article very later. Let's continue. Piscatella Pist isn't alone in this, in this mix of certainty in the number, but uncertainty in Nintendo's decision making. Captain Games Dr. Sirkan Toto told me that Nintendo, quote, certainly needs to impose on next year with its predictions, predictions of 16.5% decline in hardware sales for the current fiscal year. Without a shot in the arm, sales will, quote, absolutely crater, crater next year per total, per total. But like Piscatara, he's uncertain, adding that with over $13 billion in cash, reserves and zero debt, Nintendo could, quote, affordably sit out a year of losses and be secure. Quote, this is Nintendo, the perhaps hardest to gauge game company in the world. God knows what they are really thinking, end quote. Still, one, analy one analyst disagreed with both Piscatella and Toto. James McRider, senior analyst at Omida, told me he doesn't think that Nintendo necessarily needs to launch a new system in 2024 because the Switch, quote, isn't seeing the declines we would usually associate with a console in the seventh year of its life cycle, end quote, in part thanks to offsets from the launch of Tears of the Kingdom. Per Omidia's forecast, which hardware sales are expected to decline by 14% year over year 
in 2023. Compare that, McGrader says, to PS4 hardware sales declines of 31% in its seventh year on the market. And he also points out that Xbox Series X and S sales have actually declined year over year at a faster rate than the Switch in major territories, despite the Xbox being in what would typically be, quote, growth phase of its, of its life cycle. And he says, quote, The new Zelda focus on user-generated content has clearly given, quote, the Switch legs to its hardware sales just had their best soon in Japan. And second, a best ever selling May, May in North America. Big Raider said, and he continues, Super Mario Bros. Wonder to be a similarly huge event for the platform. Remember, Nintendo shifted 4 million Wii consoles to North America alone in December 2009, when it launched new Super Mario Bros. Wii that month. End quote. That said, McRitter noted that Omega 2 is predicting a Switch successor launch in the first quarter of 2024, meaning January to April. Noting that company's current first-party lineup of games typically used to support consoles twilight years, and he predicts a successful new console at launch at that. He points out that the Switch's massive install base combined with an appetite for a larger for an upgrade indicates that a new console is quote literally going to outpace an original Switch. Okay, let's break this part down. Because there's a lot. So here we see that they're going to turn it into sales numbers, and we have two analysis saying, hold up. They do not need to have one. Oh, they have to have one. We have Piscatella, Piscatella and Toto. And then we have one from Almeida. We have James McRitter saying, no, they don't need to, they don't really need one. But he also goes into the sales of PS4, Xbox, and Switch. And it's 14% down for the Nintendo Switch year over year in 2023. And he also notes that PS4 sales went down by 31% in its seventh year. So, yes, everything is on a decline, but compare that to what PS4 did, Nintendo Switch is, do is doing a better than the PS4 because of the numbers. They're still down, but they're not as down as much. And then he also points, like Ritter, that is, he also points to what happened in 2009 when the new Super Mario Bros. Wii launched along with the Nintendo Wii system. He says that it's a huge event. And he points out to the upcoming October release of Super excuse me, Super Mario Bros. Wonder and how that could be a huge event for the console when it comes out in October. Let's continue because there's more to come. A Nintendo Switch Swan Song? Putting it all together, the portrait of Nintendo as it nears the Switch uncertain call is certainly a chaotic one. Its massive install base meaning, means that both fans and developers are eager to keep it around for longer and are hungry for backwards compatibility to support its giant library of years to come. Its technological, techno technical limitations are either dire or negligible, depending on who you ask. It's selling very well for where it is, it is in its life cycle. But also, sales are trending downward at a pace we might upset shareholder. It's certainly competing with PS5, Xbox Series X, and X successfully. But also, it, it doesn't need to because it's so different and also supplementary to both. It's a dying console and also one that's vibrantly alive seven years into its life cycle. A, a dramatic contrast to the Detros 
of the poor Wii U. Let's not talk about that system. So does Nintendo need to release a, net, a hardware in 2024? The answer, as best as I can tell you, is no. Not because the company is physically failure-proof, or because developers fans don't want it, it, but because it's not they need to. But Nintendo doesn't need to release a new console in 2024, because Nintendo doesn't need to do anything in particular. And that's what's been predicting the next console step so difficult. As the analysis I spoke with me told me, Nintendo is a maverick of a console manufacturer. It's historically more of a toy maker than a consistent force in the hardware market. It's en it has enough financial and brand security to take experimental risks like the Wii U and the Switch. Something it's done both to its both to its detriment and benefit numerous times over the years. For all we know, Nintendo has a console ready to go right out now, and it's sitting on it comfortably until it sees Switch sales dip low enough. Or alternatively, its R&D division is struggling to solve some new some new hardware problem, and it won't be ready until 2025. Who can say? Certainly, Nintendo has something in the works that is close to ready to a new console generation, and will release it when the product is done. Unlike PlayStation and Xbox, which are stuck in a cycle of competition directly with each another each generation, Nintendo, Nintendo can comfortably wait until it, its executive feels its time to, is ripe, or whether whatever strange new toy is connected. And while we can do our best to hazard guesses at when and what that might entail, ultimately, predicting Nintendo is pure chaos magic that historically no one has fully mastered. And I think Piscatella put it best in part of his response to me. Quote, Nintendo tends to surprise, he said. Ultimately, it will come down to their own internal fiscal financial goals, and more importantly, where they think development is, and how confident they are in the likelihood of success for the new platform. They are, though they're not likely to launch a new platform that isn't ready to just get out there and make their quarter. Well, no analysis has, no analyst has ever gotten rich, but constantly been able to successfully predict what Nintendo is to do. I ain't going to be the first. And that concludes the article. But let's break that part down too. Let's start first with this part right here. This one is this part says that. This part of predicting, saying that once the switch sales drop, then they will try to go for it, for the for the upgrade, and they also point out that PS5, the PlayStation, and the Xbox is always at competition with each other, and you don't need me to say this two thousand times, but the console wars, of course, have been going on forever. It's always been PlayStation or Xbox. Are you a PS5 fan or are you, are you an Xbox Series fan? Do you like more Halo? Do you like Call of Duty? Do you like um, do you like this game or that game? Xbox is known for Halo. PlayStation is for I believe is known for God of War, Assassin's Creed, all that stuff. The console wars have been going on forever, and Nintendo is sitting back in its couch, saying, you know what, let them fight. We don't need to come in here. That's what they're saying. Okay? But, at the same time, the article, the, the this particular section, according to IGN, they do not need a new Nintendo console yet. And it's because... They don't need to do anything in particular. 
that's according to the that's from the article and whatever this Nick's new toy is we don't know what it is yet we really don't that's the thing that's what the, that they say and Biscotella says Nintendo tends to surprise that's huge because remember some of the good things in life tends to be a surprise okay and I'm gonna keep that in mind okay and nobody has been rich and this quote no analyst has ever gotten rich by constantly being able to successfully predict the future especially with Nintendo now it is my turn what do I think do I really think Nintendo needs a new console at this time my answer is depending on what you are looking for here's why it has something to do with something we already covered on this channel let's let me explain first I'm going to be talking about the no side then I'll be talking about the yes side does Nintendo really need a new console at this time for the no side I'm going to argue that the games that we have are fine and I can bring it on the road with me and the games that I run like um, the Mario games for example are looking visually good and their sales number has have numbers have been doing really well if, despite the drop of course but their their sales are very good it's a really good system and I don't think we need another one until way later than 2024 to be honest and the system is a is a, um is a give me give me games and entertainment on the road it's the best system I think for Nintendo that they brought out forget the Wii U that thing I never bought it so I heard some bad things about it so yeah so you can get that thing out of here like LeBron James blocking a shot however however let's argue for the other side too do I think Nintendo Switch Nintendo needs a Switch 2 if I'm going to argue on the yes side here's what here's what I would say and this has something to do with what I, what I covered already in terms of another event that happened now you have to understand the context yes I think Nintendo Switch needs Nintendo needs a Switch 2 and this is to, lar to run larger like triple A game we're talking about a game particularly called Call of Duty why am I bringing up Call of Duty in a Nintendo Switch article because if you guys remember back just a few weeks ago we covered the FTC versus Microsoft case and during that argument during their argument for Call of Duty it was there was already discussed that um, Activision and Blizzard and Microsoft if they merge that they wanted to bring Nintendo Switch some Call of Duty and Call of Duty at, by itself is a major game and it's a triple A game to, and for that factor for that matter and we have no idea how how Nintendo Switch will handle a Call of Duty game in the current in current iteration we have noticed that certain triple A games do not work on a Nintendo Switch or they have to like compress the game in terms of you have to sacrifice graphics or performance sometimes and that is detrimental if you have to do that but with an upgrade they could attempt to bring Call of Duty to the Nintendo Switch pending the release of the contract with the with the Microsoft and Activision Blizzard because remember they just also announced that they assigned a 10 year deal on PlayStation that keeps Call of Duty also on PlayStation but also brings COD to Xbox Game Pass and eventually to the future Nintendo Switch well, will they wait until the upgrade of this rumored Nintendo Switch 2? That is to be seen 
because we do not know how the Switch 2 will be able to handle the card. Now, 2024 is only months away. And remember that there um that the, the Xbox Game Pass deal could be coming up soon. And will we see our first Nintendo Switch call Call of Duty? Will we see it happen? We have to find out. So I hope you guys enjoy this very long 35 minute read of the article. I know it's a long one, but this is one of those where we get to talk a lot. We get to discuss about the topic. That's it for now. We will see you guys in our next article reading, which I hope is a little bit more shorter. But I have something new that I want to introduce. <laughs> if you have a story you want me to cover about a certain gaming topic, let me know in the comments below. And I'm going to offer some donation incentives later on. I'll explain later on. I'll explain that topic later. That is all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed today's topic. Let me know in the comments below. Yes or no. Nintendo Switch 2. Why or why not? Let me know. We'll see you guys later on. Enjoy and keep on playing your Nintendo Switch.